It's time for the Yacht Club Show. Needed now more than ever. With Killer, Rev D, and Dr. Jim. Welcome to the Yacht Club Show. My name is Mike, and today we're featuring an outtake from our October 20th recording session. Our last show didn't touch on politics or world events, but we did have a spirited discussion on what we believe are some of the bigger issues we are facing in America. And uh, listening to it again, I, th- I thought there might be some value in, in passing this along. So uh, without further ado, here's an outtake from October 20th. You know, we're talking about this multitude of issues, all the chaos right now, it seems like this country is facing. And your point was, uh, maybe the Speaker of the House thing is not keeping you up at night, that uh, it's like it's not really impacting your daily life right now. My life hasn't changed, and at some point, they're going to have to figure out what to do. And so at that point, I worry about it. But it's not, I haven't really seen any change in the the country. Um, It is dysfunctional. They're crazy, but it's they'll get it figured out at some point when it's a crisis. There's one thing that nags at me. I don't know how you guys feel about it. There is a, uh, an unspoken, it's not even so much even unspoken. It's a pretty outspoken group within this country that just wants to withdraw from the world scene. And that's probably Trump, right? Put America first, right? Withdraw from the global stage. Right. That'd be Trump's first. Trump's that, that was Trump, but I, I think I think Jim's right, but I think it started before Trump. He was the one who, who kind tapped of pushed into it, it, got yeah. it, tapped in. But I, I think America's been looking to, um, you know, let's take care of our own. And, and I think... Um, that's the theme he kept repeating. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a lot of people who think that. I, I, really I don't do. know. I don't even know if it's let's take care of our own. It's because I don't think that's the choice. It's a false choice. We can spend money in Ukraine and take care of our own if we would just decide what it is we want to do. You know, well, you can spend money on the border and support Ukraine if you just decide what your policy is on the border. But there's not an unlimited bucket of money. Maybe there is. There I is. Mean. <laughs> that's we've back, obviously back to, just, that, that's another, back to that's that discussion. discussion. We've we obviously money. <laughs> we've just seen this for the last twenty years. Yeah, good well, point. Good it, point. It, it is a good point. And the money you get, but the money you're going to spend in Ukraine and Israel is irrelevant, almost an accounting right. error. Yeah, for a rounding error. You're you're right. But I think what we're going to run into as a country is that the interest rates go up. We're going to have a problem. It, with the economy now that could be two or three years down the road but this the interest rates now and they're not they're not coming down it's kind of funny to listen to people about uh, the last 20 years and thinking this was normal right the interest rates were not normal a, a two or three percent mortgage was not normal we got no. we got so accustomed to that we well, just thought that's the way it was there, always going to be yeah this is this is way easy money yeah i i remember when uh, i'm sure i've told you guys this but uh in the uh, in the building business if interest rates stayed below 10 percent mortgage rates stayed below 10 percent business was good right 10 percent we're not even close to that right now no but yeah. i mean that's how things have yeah, changed. yeah that's how things have changed well know? what it what it's ha- what's happened now it's gotten to eight percent but the everybody's assuming well it's going to go back down to two right right and it's not going to is what no, your point I, is. No, yeah. I, I, I would never say never, but I don't see in the foreseeable future, and, and I will say that our lifetimes, I don't, barring some catastrophe, I don't see it going down to 2 mm-hmm. or 3% mortgage. That was unheard of. No. It was I unheard of. You. I agree with you. It's not healthy even. Obviously it's not because it's, it's not sustainable. And you, know, you get a lot of people doing stupid things when money is uh, so, cheap. Free. Free. so cheap. Yeah, yeah, it was free basically. Yeah. If you tie this into the argument of foreign policy, so the, to me, the crux of foreign policy is, will we be able to safely withdraw from the world without negative consequences? No. I agree. So therefore, you're saying, 
okay, we're going to stay engaged at the world. It's going to cost us money. How much of our current budget is it going to cost? And what are the long-term consequences of that investment? And to me, that's a kind of evaluation you have to make. So the, we got here not just because of Biden. We got here because of Trump. Be, actually, we got here starting with Bush. Bush, then Obama, then Trump, and now Biden. In what? Spending. In what? So we spent our way up to this point. And now we're trying to figure out how to allocate whatever money we're we're getting. We figure we gotta we gotta limit our spending and just work within some sort of constraints. Sure. Okay. And we gotta solve problems within some sort of constraints. But then we have to figure out what are the things that are working against that. So you look at, okay, we're gonna do, you know, the Green New Deal, which is gonna hike up the cost of energy, which is going to add to inflation. I'm not even arguing that, and I'm not arguing against climate change, but you got to figure out if you believe the climate is changing and that it's caused by CO2 emissions, you have to come up with a plan that is going to help you address that. That isn't just some knee jerk blaming the coal and oil companies. I agree. Which isn't going to happen. Right. There, there's good, there, like we talked last time, there is no plan. There will be no plan. I thought I read that uh, Biden's opening up a, a pipeline or something. Did you see yeah. that? It proved a pipeline. I, I think that... And that's, Whoa, that's quite a shift. Yeah, but, yeah. That, but again, that's. it almost seems like, you know, we, what would be smart to- politics, let's open up a pipeline. His smart politics, let's build another 50 feet of wall. This is the way I read it, and I, I just don't think it's any part of a plan. No, there is no, no it's, it's it, knee-jerk. It, yeah. it's, it's, how can I get a vote? Yeah. How can right. I get a vote right now? And, and people have to real uh, to me, I'm really on a soapbox now, but I'm, just let me say this. Dr. Jim on a soapbox? <laughs> we have, the, the goal is, if you believe the goal is to reduce CO2 emissions, tell me how you're going to do that. When 1.4 billion people in Africa decide, you know what? I think I would like, uh, you know, a nice home, a, a decent home with heating in the winter and air conditioning in the summer. I'd like a nice little car so I can get, you know, a to B. get around. I would like an infrastructure that would support that. I would like an education system that I, will allow me to educate my kids. And I would like a health care system that would allow me to live a decent life. And can you throw in a flushable toilet, a too? Toilet. Can, can a toilet. Can you throw A toilet, yes. That would be, is this all this too much to ask? And I, I am, as a card-carrying progressive Democrat, think that's excellent. Okay, how much energy is that going to cost? And where's the energy going to come from? Oh, windmills. Okay. How many windmills do we need to get those 1.4 billion people into decent homes? And where is the money going to come from to build the windmills? And in countries that have dysfunctional governments at best. And where are you going to get the wire? For you know these transmission lines, we we're going to get the, the metals to well, build the windmills, and that's China, right? And, and China is is going to do it with their coal fire plants. To it's it's as far okay, as Africa is concerned, China is going to solve the problem because they're buying up everything in Africa. Uh, well, right? you know, China's got their own problems now. <laughs> I know, right? but but you got to pro- you buy these metals. They're very to process them is very dirty, and is very energy intensive. So that's going to take energy. Mining is going to take energy. Producing fertilizers to feed, to feed these people. Uh, fertilizers come from pre- petrochemicals. I mean, there is no... There's no plan. I'm not hearing any plan, global plan. plan. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction. What's that? that? And I think you'll start seeing this slowly, that the electric car mandates and some of these um, green mandates are going to be, I'm going to say forgot, rolled back. We're, push we're, back, push, push back, out, because push we're, we're going to we're, we're start, and you're starting to hear it now. 
we don't have the capabilities to do it. It's a great idea to, you know, everybody, yes. it's a super idea. I'm in, and again, like you, global warming or climate change, put that aside, okay, for, for a moment. If we really want to do these things, it's going to cost too much money. People aren't going to buy, they're not buying the electric cars. The people in Africa want homes and they, they want the things that we have. I, I think you're going to see the green initiative slowly go by the wayside. Yeah, you don't have, first of all, wow. the technology. Bold prediction. It, I, the technology I really is not there. Right. It's never mind to, you could, you could talk about spending an infinite amount of money. Nobody has figured out the physics how to get this thing done efficiently and on a global scale. So you think that it's more practical to build electric plants? Uh, no, I think it, it's, it's, it's probably more practical well, to... You talk about... In building, Africa. Oh, the power plants have to be powered by what? Right. Nuclear. Nuclear? Nuclear, is, nuclear. is a possible solution. Yeah. That's, that's certainly a solution that is so politically hot. It, that's the problem, but it's workable. It is. It, you know, it is. like a, a Gen 4... Reactor. Reactor. Whatever. Safe. That would be a solution, but you're right. It, it becomes a political issue, and then you get Greta Thunberg. She's the savior of the world, what, isn't what, she? What, uh, <laughs> yeah, what, what her, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what, Jim, it comes down to, and we talked about this, there, there was nobody, you know, you got the Trumps and the Bidens. You, you don't have anybody who people have confidence in. That's true. That will, okay. We haven't seen that in it, a it long just, it time. It ain't there. It ain't, maybe it was never there. It, you know? It, 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 was, it was. It probably was never there in the sense that the world was not as so integrated and as complex as it is today. And therefore, I think it requires someone who understands the complexity and understands how to bring some consensus how to, how to deal with some of these problems. Whether or not you believe in CO2 emissions causing global warming or the degree to which it causes global warming, to me, that having that debate is, is fruitless because that's the direction the world is going. And so, okay, let's just accept that. Now, what's the plan for dealing with that problem? Whatever they want to do, all of it, I think, is, you know, electric cars. I would love to have a car parked in my driveway that was, you know, I didn't have to get gas in it. I just plug it in at night and I could go out and all that good stuff. And I could drive to Florida. Well, that's, yeah, that's the key. Yeah, you would do it. Yeah, you do it. I have no problem. No. You have to have that sort of a, that's that what you think about and you have to think about how are you going to elevate those people in Africa there's there's 8 billion people in the world 6 billion of them are poor okay how do you elevate those 6 billion people into a livable quality of life and you know what happens is that if we don't do something in 10 years we're all going to die that's, right. the, that, that's the crap that you hear. Remember Al right. Gore? Oh, yeah, the had, Doomsday Club. Well, I think, yeah. it was, I think the Doomsday date is already passed. It's I passed. think so. It's passed. Yeah, yeah, that point of no return, right? With point yeah. of no return. I mean, at that point, that it's all about, hopeless. We're that all was about that. 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you hear. That's what passes yeah. as leadership yeah. Yeah, I know. today. There, there's a fundamental lack of leadership, certainly in this country. It's a topic for another day, but, you know... I, I see it in, in business, you know, as well. I mean, it's just, we're training leaders to drink the Kool-Aid. We're not training leaders to uh, have confidence in their own gut feel, their own instincts, uh, to, to maybe rock the boat a little bit. You know, everyone has to toe the line. Everyone has to, uh, maybe the Republicans are a little different story, but you got, you got to, you got to follow the party line. No, you know, I, I you, don't, you I gotta, don't. I don't think it's Republican, Democrat, Mike. I, I think it, at this point, what it's come down to is that if I say something against the orthodoxy, the Internet just crucifies me. Somebody can sit in their basement and say, um, You're nuts. Dave's an idiot yeah. because of this. Yeah. And then the, the press picks it up, and you just get this uh, 
you know, Twitter and all this other crap. It, it's the internet is the best and worst thing that's ever happened. Right. Or social, I guess social media is a yeah. better. Um, but, you, but you know, you do you look at and whether you know whether he's just really good at presenting his image to the world, and it's he's as you know as corrupt as the rest of them. But you, I look at somebody like a Jamie Dimon who runs a company that just regardless of the economic environment continually strives, moves forward and is successful. So I think, and, and you know, Mike, you asked a question, I think about how companies, how, how do, how companies don't really look at their employees as resources. Yeah. They don't trust them. No, they don't trust them. But yeah. that comes, but, to your point, but what that is, you breed out, companies seem to breed out dissenting voices. They don't like, if you're- if Or you're innovation. Dissent, or innovation, <laughs> yes. Yeah. If, you're, if you bring up an innovation that's gonna cost the manager his, some piece of his empire, but it's for the good of the company, it will be- Squashed. It'll be killed. Yeah. So you have, this is why I almost, I, I've always sort of felt we don't need antitrust legislation because companies will kill themselves with this kind of behavior. And they do. Now, the problem, I think, with antitrust legislation is the people who are really successful innovators and wind up dominating the market get punished. I find it funny how they're going after Amazon. Yeah. OK, what did he do wrong? Bezos? Bezos. What did he do? I, I saw an interview with him and said, you know, you're putting out all these mom and pop shops out of business. He, he said, you know what? If I don't do it, someone else is going to. I want to give customers the best end user experience. Right. And it's like, I guess I'd rather have someone with that vision than a company that's just going to come in and, and just muck things up. And, and he's, you know? he's right. Mom and pop. Walmart put out mom and pop. I, I, I'm in. I understand that. But... Are we better off? It's more convenient. Is it more convenient? Are we better off as a uh, as a people? As a consumer. As a consumer, with that. Am I getting more choice with cheaper prices? Right. Yes. And I that's what we are. want. That's ultimately what we want. And it's easy. Push of a button, and it's delivered oh. in two days. Yeah. What are or we? Or the next day. Or what the same day. Yeah. What are <laughs> we? Why are we responsible for someone deciding to go into a business that is no longer viable? Okay, I make horseshoes. Put the cars out of business because I can't, you know, I can't sell my horseshoes. Yeah. This is the kind of mentality that just don't romanticize the mom and pop. Places. Well, I think that's exactly what we've done. We've romanticized this thing, and oh, they're going out of business. I always felt if we didn't add value as, as a company, right, there was no reason for us to exist. That's a good point. Yeah, I just agree. to you, you can buy the stuff somewhere else. Okay. Um, if we didn't give you something special, something that you needed, we didn't deserve to be in business. Right. But it was up to us to find that. Right. It was up to you to, to yeah. find it and convince the customer that, you're yeah, better off right. paying, spending 10% more right. exactly. and, deal, and working with me. Exactly. And if you can't do that, then you don't deserve you don't to deserve. be. You don't deserve. You don't deserve to be in business. I, right. I agree with you completely. But that, that's capitalism, and capitalism is a dirty word. Dirty word, exactly. And actually, just for everybody's information, the only person can speak with any authority about this is the Reverend D here. He ran a company, well, and you guys were in. yeah, but we weren't in the C-suite. We, we didn't were, have to uh, make the decisions you well, had to make I mean, to keep the company viable. Don't be humble about it. No, You've I'm, had I'm not, to, I, well, you made the company successful enough that it was bought out by a bigger company, a big, a big organization, <laughs> yeah, because they were desirable. Who now shows up on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, on your mailbox. On, with, uh, uh, no, no. They show up on uh, on Bloomberg. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Dave was on the cover of a magazine, too, by the way. Oh, I didn't know that. He okay. didn't know that. No? He, yeah, he's got <laughs> you his, have it up in your wall? It was a Sinatra pose. Don't, my, don't you my, have the jacket over no, your yeah, shoulder? Yeah. I, Do you, my, have a, you have a poster you have it on your wall or something? I know we did for a long time, but Kate took it down. Oh. She, she, said, she was ashamed she, of your... How many, how many, of she was ashamed of your capitalist that. past. How yeah. many can say that they're in the cover of a business magazine? Exactly. <laughs> Not too many people. So anyway, 
I, I'm I'm dropping back to say somebody at this table is a referee for the shall we say the, the naive thoughts that Mike and Dave Jim is. would have. The, the, I, and that's true. Dave's credible in this uh, business and this stuff. Yeah. So if he if he says we make sense, then we're okay. We'll yes. we'll continue talking till we begin to make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that what really galls me in this discussion about capitalism is the crony capitalism that we get out of Washington, where they pick winners and losers and and just go with whatever is the most uh, expedient <laughs> political choice that they could political. make. You just said the political. Yes. You know, and, and, and they support that kind of capitalism. Okay. That to me is is where you give capitalism a bad name. Right. I mean, there should be some sort of regulation. Capitalists are not necessarily pure, pure. Right. or they're they're pure in the sense of what they're trying to do. They're trying to maximize their own self interest. Right. But they're not, which is not necessarily always the best thing for the local community or the individuals. And that's where government has a role to play. If you're making a product that's dumping arsenic into the right. local drinking water, then obviously you have to be corrected in doing that. But it's a place for, for regulation and, and the government, but it's it's sort of to protect the consumer and not to direct the economy. You know, Dave, Dave really hit the nail on the head. There's just a lack of leadership. and But you know, Mike, we've talked about that for... No, it I goes know. back to the last presidential, presidential yeah. thing, and it's still... There's just nobody. No, because no. You, you got Biden pushing for uh, aid to Ukraine, but most Americans aren't in favor of that. Oh, I disagree. I think most Americans are. It's just, I don't even know that that's important. I mean, leadership means making the choices that true. aren't necessarily That's a good point. going to pull well. Supposedly they have the bigger picture, right? Their position. Yeah. So all of this discussion about, this is where that discussion about leadership comes in. You have to have leaders and the leaders have to develop plans and they have to be able to sell them to the voter. That's what we don't have. Every time you got a speech from these people, they're trying to turn it into whatever their political advantage, what would be to their political advantage. Like, you know, Biden could get up there and talk about Israel and talk about Ukraine and then talk about how the Republicans are opposing everything we try to do in the world and da da da. You know, da, and da, it da. wouldn't be it would be mega Republicans, right? You know, it just it, there's always got to be that little um, jab at mega it, Republicans. It, 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 oh yeah. yeah. Or, eh, the only know, thing I'm just reminded that, uh, and I don't know how much of this is just Republican talking point that maybe this mess in Israel was exacer- exacerbated by the $6 million we gave to Iran. So I don't know if it's a policy failure or not, and that's probably pretty uh, pretty subjective. Uh, you know, well, that was something that was not, not popular. I mean, I, I'm assuming... You know, well, that was to release the hostages. He bought the hostages. Right. You know, I, I think what Obama and Biden try to do is, if I'm nice to you... You will be nice, and that's right. never the it just, case. It just it just doesn't work. Doesn't work and, that you way. You know, with, uh, uh, with with Trump, the thing Trump had going for him, and I would would they have attacked Israel with Trump in? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Well, would, would Trump wouldn't have given him six billion though either. No, but uh, you know they that money was that, that, that drop in the bucket. Well, Jim. but that was too quick. I mean, that was like a month ago. So okay, we got. Six billion now. We're gonna we're gonna go after Israel. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think that. But with the, the the thing Trump had going, nobody he was unpredictable. Yeah. But I don't think Hamas would have cared about. Him. I disagree with you. I disagree. I don't with you. I don't think he would have. They did this. They did this because they are they're desperate. They're they're becoming more and more irrelevant. Within the Arab world, and they see Saudi Arabia getting close to signing well, a deal with. That's true. That, I think that with I, Israel, I agree, I that pushed that there. forward, and then there is this, uh, you know, just just getting back back on stage with whatever it is their agenda is. Are they funded by U.S. money? Is my question. Well, it, you know, a lot of people say they are in the sense that we are. You you send we send aid to the Palestinians. Where do you think that money goes? Yeah. You know, 
It goes, who man? They're the ruling party. What do you think? They, the money has to somehow go through sure. them. And, you know, they're going to, I'm sure we paid for a lot of those rockets that went off in Israel. But I'm, you know what? It's, it's the history of the United States. Sometimes we, uh, we have to fight battles that are of our, of our own making. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I think we're still the world's policemen. Yeah. For, as bad as we are yes. at doing it, we have some, there's some degree of order in the world yes. because of us. And it's unfortunate, and it's going to cost us money yeah. to do it. But like Dr. Jim says, we just print more money. <laughs> you, we're going to do that. It's a question of, okay, recognizes what we're doing and fold it into some... Right. It has to be tied together. That's leadership. And you can't do that. If you can't, you got to do that on a global scale or at least try to do, try it, to do it. Yes, yes. And that's obviously so many things, so many things on a global scale are out of your control. Our leaders are not very adaptable because I want to get elected... That's number one. Yes. I, number, yeah, you're right. Number one is I want to get elected yeah. again. Doing my job is secondary. Yes. If I can do a good job, that would be nice. We probably yeah. need to wrap this up. So yep. in, in summary, it's just a lack <laughs> of leadership. We're, we're in a quandary. We're in a quandary. But we will bring to some resolution the great beer you know, that's our value add. What we, we can do for that. the world. So that's what we're going to do. That's our contribution. There you it's, go. It's, it's, somebody's got, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to yep. do it. We'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I got I to gotta work on my off? closing lines. Yeah. No, I didn't. I said I was going to come oh, up with Tim, somebody. I'm disappointed. I was I looking know, forward I to know. it. I know. I, I, I feel like I need... I'm letting you guys down. You should go uh, with the original for a change, you well, know? Well, I, let's... Uh, Illegitimize, non Illegitimize, non-compliment... No. Carborundum. Non-carborundum. Carborundum. Illegitimize, non-carborundum est. Boom. 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 Good. Boom. Music by War on Drugs as found on the Internet Archives, archive.org.